Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to solve just one um, relatively short uh, problem, but I think it's kind of educational um, and uh, probably some exams, which uh, also are part of this course, uh, will be based on very similar concepts which I'm going to talk about uh, right now. So we're talking about friction. This is the friction problems number three. This is how you get it through mechanics and dynamics to friction and problems number three presented on unizor.com. That's the course called Physics for Teens. There is a prerequisite course which is called Math for Teens and um, I do suggest you actually to be uh, rather familiar with such concepts as vectors and, and calculus uh, from, from any course of mathematics and if you want obviously you can use Math for Teens on this web website. All these courses are free and uh, they don't have any advertisements, so no monetization. All right, so um, one problem for today is as follows. Let's consider you have a horizontal table and an object on it. Let's say this object has mass m. Now, obviously there is a friction. I mean, the whole problem is about fr friction, right? Now. There are two pulleys here, and the thread goes down here and down here. And there are some weights. Mass of this is uh, M1, and mass of this, a smaller one, is M2. So, basically, we understand that since this is bigger than this, <coughs> heavier so the weight will be greater on this side than on this side and the object on the table would move to the left in this particular case now let's assume that we have some kind of a, um, a friction and nu is the coefficient of the friction which is basically the ratio between the pressure this object um, uh, exhorts on the table um, and uh, and the force which prevents the movement so mu is actually F divided by W where this is the friction force which is always against the movement so in this case the friction force is directed this way obviously weight directed down and uh, and the weight so our purpose is to find this coefficient of friction if I know that this particular object is moving to the left with acceleration a now without the friction um, so if mu is equal to zero well this force goes with the force of the weight actually and this force goes also with the force of the, a, uh, of the weight and uh, it will just fall down without any um, restrictions so this guy will move it with exactly the same acceleration as this guy is falling down which is gravity uh, acceleration of uh, gravity which is g um, now if there is a friction then obviously things change now as usually we have to examine all the objects and all the forces which are acting on these objects. Okay, so let's start with, let's say, this object. What kind of forces are acting on it? Well, there are two forces, basically. One force goes down, and this is its weight. And another is up, which is tension of the thread. Okay, as a result of these two forces, this thing goes down. Now, what is the movement of this thing as far as its speed, acceleration, etc.? Well, in absolute terms, not in terms of the vector, but in terms of magnitude of this vector, the acceleration of this one going down is exactly the same as acceleration of this one going to the left, because they are attached to each other, and the thread obviously is assumed to be non-elastic, so as uh, uh, the acceleration of this down is equal to acceleration of this to the left and we know it a 
So, what we can do right now is to completely make uh, a, an equation of the second Newton's law for this particular uh, weight. The uh, force which goes down is W1. Well, let's assume that down is a positive direction. So all these numbers, all these forces will be positive in magnitude and I will use the sign to um, basically um, uh, to tell which particular direction it goes. So I will have it as a minus T1. So the weight goes down, the tension goes up, and this is basically all the forces which are acting on this particular uh, weight, right? And uh, obviously it's equal to, along, uh, according to the second Newton's law, mass times its acceleration. Again, I'm talking about absolute terms. Acceleration obviously goes down as a vector, but this is just a scalar, positive scalar. All right? Okay, that's it for this guy. Now, this guy goes up, obviously. This is heavier, so the whole system moves this way. And it moves up also with the same acceleration, A, because this is the thread which, which is not elastic and, uh, and obviously pulls up with the same speed as this one goes to the left. What forces are acting uh, on this particular um, object? Well, the same thing. Down goes its weight, up goes tension, which is on this side. Tension is different. On this side we have T1, on this side we have T2. T1 pulls it this way, T2 pulls this object this way, and this object obviously uh, backwards. So the tension is always uh, pulling things together, so to speak. So if, if for, for this guy it moves up, the, the tension is directed upwards. For this guy, tension is uh, directed, directed this way. It pulls it. And, the, and, and for this guy, again, the tension for this guy pulls it up, and for this mo mo uh, pulls it uh, to the right. So the equation would be very, very similar, except since we are moving up, I will do it instead of weight minus tension, I will, I will have tension minus weight. Because I want to assume that all these um, numbers, T1, T2, A, whatever, all are positive, that's why I'm using the signs, since I know that we are moving to the left. All right. Now, there is also the middle object, and we have to determine um, the coefficient of friction for this guy. Well, let's examine the forces. T1 moves it to the left, T2 resists and pulls to the right, and F is the friction force, which is also prevents the movement. Since movement to the left, I direct my friction force to the right. These are three, fun, uh, three main um, forces. Now, obviously there is a gravity, but there is a reaction of the table, and they nullify each other, so we can just disregard these two guys, right? All right, so in the horizontal movements, it's T1 to the left, minus T2 and minus F is capital M times A. So these are three equations which basically constitute the picture of everything in this case. All I have to do right now is to express whatever I know um, in terms whatever are given. So instead of W1, I will obviously put M1 times acceleration of the free fall, right? Because the gravity, the force of gravity is equal to, again, according to the um, new, uh, second Newton's law, it's mass times acceleration of the free fall. Same thing here. Instead of W2, I will put M2 times G. And I also know the F, my, uh, the friction force, is equal to uh, weight times uh, uh, the coefficient of the friction and weight is m times g times mu and this is equal to ma 
Now, let's look at this. What's unknown? T1, T2, and mu are unknown. Everything else is known. So, three linear equations with three unknowns. Now, what do they have to determine in this problem? Well, I didn't forget. <laughs> well, it's mu, coefficient of the friction, and the tensions on both sides. All right, so that's exactly what is unknown, and that's exactly what we can determine very easily. So let me just do this little exercise in solving the linear equations. These, are, these happen to be very easy. So we have from the first equation, T1, already basically determined. It's M1 times G minus A, right? T1 M1, 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 A goes to the left, so that's what we have. T2 from the second one is equal to M2 plus, so G plus A. Now, let me just stop here for a second. Why is tension less than the weight? Weight is M1 times G. Now, we are assuming that everything is positive, right? That's why there is a sign here. So why the tension for the left weight is less than the weight? Well, because we are moving down, right? So if I have certain um, weight and I'm holding this weight and it does not move, then obviously my force, which I'm forcing it to stay in place, is equal to the weight, right? So, in this case, they are equal. But if I move down, I don't have to hold it as tightly. My thread, which connects to this particular object, if there is a thread here, the tension on this thread would be less. And actually, if I'm moving my hand with the same speed down, with the same acceleration down, as my object is falling down, the tension would be zero at all, because there is no tension. I'm moving. So, that's very important to understand. And obviously, that's exactly how it feels it should move. The uh, greater acceleration of the movement of the uh, supporting um, uh, block or whatever it is, um, the, obviously the less will be the tension. And eventually, if A is equal to G, which means if I'm moving down with the same speed as this thing is falling, then the thread between us would have no tension at all. It would be zero, right? On the other hand, the second object, we are moving against the weight, right? So, we are not only not allowing it to fall down, we are pulling it up against the weight, and that's exactly why we are edging this A. So, I just want to explain the physical meaning. It's not just algebraic manipulation. There is a very good physical meaning of subtracting here and adding here because this guy goes down and this guy goes up against the uh, weight and that's why the tension should compensate for both the gravity and acceleration so that's very natural okay and from here we obviously can determine mu which is equal to t1 minus t2 minus MA divided by M MG where T1 is okay I can just write it down to so mu is equal to uh, T1, which is M1 times G minus A, minus M2, G plus A, minus M A, we'll use the square brackets here, and we can divide it by M G. And this is my mu. So, this is basically the answer to the problem. We have determined the tensions. The tension on the thread, which is on the left, would be less than the weight. The tension on the right would be greater than the weight of the right object. 
and the uh, coefficient of the friction in, in the middle for the middle object which is on the horizontal table is expressed in this particular well rather long <laughs> formula um, and so I do suggest you to go to the website to mechanics dynamics friction and problem number three and read the notes for this lecture which basically the same as a textbook and uh, be prepared for exams that would be the next uh, topic in this particular category for the friction so the friction has certain theoretical um, lecture in the f uh, in the beginning then few problems and the exams <coughs> so that's it that's it for today thank you very much and good luck <laughs>